Ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to talk to you about food. Obviously it's rather a subjective issue as to whether you like food or not. Some people find one thing tasty and others will prefer another. But there is some science behind this too, which I've recently discovered and which I would like to share with you today. So I grew up in England and, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, traditional English food does not have a reputation for being particularly tasty. The food which we used to eat before the wonderful influences of India and other places came to our dining table, the food had a reputation, at least in Europe, for being rather insipid. As I was growing up, I discovered two strong flavours which particularly appealed to me. One is Marmite, a yeast extract spread, which very much divides opinion in the UK. They say you either love it or you hate it. And I certainly loved it. It livened up my food no end. It was virtually the only thing I considered to be truly yummy. Worcester sauce is in the same category. It's a little black bottle of sauce that you can add a few drops to food or to drinks, such as tomato juice, and it also gives them an extra buzz, an extra little bit of tastiness. And uh, this was written off by friends and family as just being my peculiar taste, until I discovered the science, which I'll refer to in, in a moment. I left England and lived in other European countries, and fell in love with Italian food, as of course many people do. Dishes being, for instance, the famous insalata caprese, with mozzarella cheese and balsamic vinegar. Or pasta, with a combination of, say, mushrooms in the sauce and a little bit of grated parmesan on top. Or perhaps some anchovies with a little bit of garlic. The kind of Mediterranean food that people get very excited about in Northern Europe, North America, and pretty well everywhere in the world. Now, you may ask where I'm, where I'm going with this. This is not just some sort of uh, mouth-watering uh, speech to get you in the mood for your lunch. I'll come back, as I promised I would, to the science. There is actually a scientific explanation why all of the things I've mentioned so far are yummy. And the answer is what the Japanese call umami. This is the sixth taste. It's not sweet or savoury or sour or bitter or... Uh, no, hang on, it's the fifth taste. Uh, it's not that either any of those four, it's the fifth one. There's an, another article about the sixth taste, which I'll leave for another speech, but today I'm talking about the fifth taste. It was discovered by a Japanese professor who was actually in Leipzig, Germany at the time, in 1899. He enjoyed some of the meat and cheese which he tried in Germany, but nothing matched his wife's soup. Back home in Japan, this soup included tuna flakes and mushroom and seaweed. And he decided to perform a chemical analysis as to what it was that made food yummy for him, having had this exposure to international experience and different uh, tastes in food. And he discovered that there was an element which you can isolate, monosodium glutamate, or MSG, also known as umami, is present as uh, one element which you can isolate, as I say, but it is also produced in combinations of flavours. So, Marmite has it, Worcester sauce has it, but also the combination of ripe tomatoes and mozzarella cheese, the combination of mushroom and parmesan, and the combination of anchovy and garlic produce this, as does the first combination that he tested it on, uh, tuna flakes, mushroom, and especially seaweed. Give the dish that extra punch, that indefinable yumminess, I want to say. But of course it's not indefinable. It, there is, in fact, science now to explain this. There's been some confusion about MSG. In the US, in the New England Journal of Medicine, an article was published in 1968 in which the author, a doctor, claimed that he'd suffered adverse health effects following a Chinese meal. And he described this in some detail, and this became known as Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. And 
MSG became stigmatized as a result. There was a, 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 an effect of palpitations and a feeling of numbness that were associated with this substance and that gave Chinese res restaurants in America a bad reputation for, for many years. It turned out that the whole article was a hoax. The author confessed to this in 2018, so a full 50 years after publishing the article, the then 96-year-old retired doctor said that the whole thing had been a hoax. And uh, of course there was perhaps some prejudice in society at the time. There were ethnic stereotypes. One might even say that it was uh, a racist uh, uh, assumption. There was a rejection of the other, the foreign food, the Chinese food in the, in, in the US. And now I'm pleased to say that American dictionaries describe Chinese restaurant syndrome now, in 2022, as being a dated and offensive term. This is because we've discovered the joys of umami. And in case anyone still has any lingering preconceptions about Chinese restaurants, as I have described in chemical terms, in scientific terms, this is also present in Mediterranean style tomato dishes and also bacon. Now, that's a staple of the US, as it is of the UK, breakfast and nobody's ever claimed to have palpitations or numbness as a result of having a cooked breakfast in the US or the UK. So I think the argument that this was linked to some sort of uh, prejudice is a strong one. I've come to love China and Chinese food, and there are combinations there too of soy sauce and fermented bean curd, and of course uh, seaweed as in Japanese cuisine, which are incredibly tasty. And so I've gone from being a boy who just thought Marmite was yummy to discovering an entire world of new pleasure across China with all of the yummy food that is umami. And if you enjoy any of the dishes I've mentioned or perhaps other combinations too, maybe the explanation for that pleasure will be the same one. So next time you tuck into something that you find particularly yummy, I hope you'll get some extra pleasure from the knowledge that it's not just yummy, it's probably scientifically yummy. Bon appétit!今天和大家聊一聊美食这个话题。说到美食，可能是很主观的一个问题。假之蜜糖，以之砒霜，可能你喜欢这个，他喜欢那个。不过最近我发现，美食之所以是美食，背后似乎存在着一些科学道理，我
还有世界其他地方都十分风靡。说到这里，你可能会问：讲了这么多美食，为了让我们食指大动，迫不及待的想要吃午饭了吗？并非如此，其实这背后的原因呢、啊，就在于一种在日语里叫做“五麻米”的物质，也就是我们常说的鲜味儿。鲜味是自酸、甜、苦、辣之后的第五种味道，当然还有第六种味道，这个我们后续再说。在一八九九年，一位常年旅居在德国莱比锡的一位日本教授，他啊、呃、在尝遍了世界各地的美食之后，发现啊自己仍然最钟情于太太做的一碗日式鱼汤。传统日式鱼汤当中包含的食材有吞拿鱼碎、蘑菇，还有日式海草。他就想，是否可以从化学角度分析一番，为什么在自己尝过了这么多的肉类、芝士等等美味之后，仍然对自己太太的一碗鱼汤情有独钟呢？人们发现，原因就存在于一种叫做谷氨酸钠的物质上面。也就是日语里刚刚所讲的“五妈咪”，这种物质可以从单一的食材当中提取分离出来，也可以是不同食材组合产生。它既存在于马麦酱里，也存在于五斯特酱当中；它既存在于芝士和蘑菇的组合当中，也存在于我们刚才所说的蒜和提鱼的组合里。那当然，它也更存在于我们提到的那一碗鲜美的鱼汤里。很多人认为这是一种难以言喻、难以解释的美味，但其实背后的科学道理的确存在。有关于谷氨酸钠这种物质，过去还曾经有过一段误会。在一九六八年，美国出版的一份《新英格兰医学杂志》里。有一位教授撰文批评中餐，包含了过多的谷氨酸钠。他认为，人们在吃完中餐以后啊，会出现心悸或者是手脚麻痹这些症状，管它叫做中餐馆综合症。在这篇文章刊登出之后的数年时间里，位于美国的中餐馆，他们的口碑一直都不太好。一直到五十年后的二零一八年，这位时年九十六岁的教授再一次撰文指出，其实多年前的那篇文章是一场彻头彻尾的骗局。可能是因为当时的社会环境对于外国文化、外国饮食，尤其是中国饮食，持相对歧视的态度，是一种种族偏见。我很高兴地告诉大家，在今年，也就是二零二二年，美国的字典里已经正式将“中餐馆综合症”这个词列为过时且具有冒犯意义的词汇，所以那些对于乌纳米的鄙视态度可以休矣。其实说到鲜味，它也经常出现在地中海的餐桌上，比如说番茄，还有培根。他们经常呢，也都是英国和美国早餐桌上的常客，却从来没有人听说过，在吃了早餐之后会出现心悸呀、啊、手脚麻痹等等现象。所以，我想那些对于中餐持有怀疑态度的人，可以改变一下他们的态度了。我非常喜欢中华饮食，比如说酱油，还有豆腐乳。以及日式海草所做的各种各样的美味。小的时候啊，我可能只知道马麦酱，但是现在长大了，有机会尝遍在中华美食当中各式各样还有鲜味这样的食物。如果在座的各位和我一样，也喜欢上述提到的那些食材组合的话，我想背后的科学原因很可能是一样的。下一次大家在尝试美味的时候，可能啊、呃、可以因为这样的一篇演讲而感受到多一点美味，因为它们不仅仅是简单的美味，而是有实实在在科学理据支持的美味。最后，我祝大家胃口大开。
，谢谢。